In this lesson we're going to check how to work with a JSX specification in Vit projects. And additionally we're going to implement our own custom JSX specification. So let's get going. First of all we're going to clear out our main.js and in here we'll add only one import. I will import the file with a name 12.jsx and right away let's create this file within source folder. And as an example we're going to add some arbitrary JSX code within this file. So let's create new constant template and then let's use a JSX syntax and specify arbitrary JSX markup. Kind of like we do in React projects when we create components. Here I'll create a div with a class wrapper within which I'm going to put tag p. And finally this paragraph will contain anchor tag. And just to have some styles applied to our markup, we're also going to create CSS file with a name 12.css and import it right here. And as a content, let's just copy over all content from 3.css and put it within 12.css. And just because we're using CSS class called wrapper in our JSX markup, let's rename this selector on wrapper. And so that now we export constant with a name template from this module. Let's go back to our main.js and apply the structuring to this import and extract only constant with a name template. And I'm also going to use console log statement in here just to see what we get within this variable. After that, we're going to get console error because currently our project cannot recognize JSX syntax. So we need to enable JSX support. And to convert JSX syntax into JS syntax, it uses another bundler called ESBuild. And it also lets us specify a couple of options within Vit configuration file to kind of define our own JSX specification. And this way we're going to teach Vit how to process our JSX syntax. So let's go back to the file with JSX code. And here I'm going to create new local function with the name create. And later we will specify this function as a JSX factory function, which is going to be responsible for creating DOM elements based on our JSX elements. Let's do this right now. So let's open up Vit configuration file. And in this configuration object, we're going to specify options for ESBuild within this internal object. And for now, the only option that we need is called JSX factory. And this is the option where we need to specify our function name, which will be responsible for processing JSX elements. So if earlier we have created the function with a name create, I'm going to use this name in here. And when Vit is going to process our JSX code, for every tag name it is going to call our custom function create. And it will pass three additional parameters. First one will be element, which will contain the tag name. The second one will be an object with attributes that we have specified on that tag within JSX syntax. And the third parameter will be content that we can put in between opening and closing tags. So before going any further, let's just see what we get in all these three parameters. I'm going to add another console log statement and print out every parameter. And this function will be called three times, one time per tag we have used within JSX syntax. So the first call to the create function has received three parameters with the following values. The element parameter equals to tag name A. The attributes that we have specified on the anchor tag consist of only one attribute called href. And finally the text that we have specified for this anchor element is link. The second call to the create function has received parameters with such values when the first one corresponds to the tag name and the other two for now do not contain any values. And the reason to that is because we haven't returned anything from our factory function yet. And as a content for a paragraph element, we use another element, which is anchor tag. And finally, these are the last set of three parameters that we get after calling create function third time. Because the root element of our JSX markup is div, which has only one attribute class with the value wrapper. And because we haven't returned anything from our factory function yet, the third parameter, which is supposed to be a content of this div element, holds value undefined for now. And now we're gonna get to fixing it. Going back to our create function, in here I'm going to create new constant called 
node and based on the element name what we receive as the first parameter into this function. We're going to use native DOM API and create DOM node by using create element method on the document object like this. And now that we have our DOM element created, we need to take attributes object which we receive as a second parameter into this function and iterate over all the attributes within this object. And to iterate keys and values of this object, we can use JavaScript method entries. And here we're passing object name, which we'd like to iterate over. And if this object will be null, we're going to fall back to an empty object. And this entries method is going to produce array with pairs, key and value, that are contained within attributes object. So we can easily iterate over this array, and as a first parameter, we're going to destructure these pairs. The name variable will hold the attribute name, and the value variable will hold its value. And finally, in here, by using another native DOM API method called setAttribute, we can set attribute with a name stored in the variable name and assign it value stored in variable value like this. And down here, we also need to check if third parameter also contains value, which is supposed to be a content for our DOM element. And if this value will be a string, we're going to create text node based on this string by using create text node method and pass received content into this method and then reassign resulting text element to this content variable. And finally, we need to append this text element into that DOM element we have previously created. So let's use append child method and pass variable content as a first parameter. And eventually we're going to return created DOM element from this function. So right now let's check one more time what values we're gonna get within every parameter that we print in here. The first call to the create function has produced the following result. As a first parameter we still get anchor element. The second parameter is object with attributes to this anchor, and the third parameter will be a content for this element. And then when Vit sees paragraph element within our JSX markup, it is going to call create function with this element as the first parameter. And since we have not specified any attributes on this P element, the second parameter is empty. And finally, just because this paragraph element contains another element A, as a third parameter, we have received DOM element, which corresponds to an anchor. And this anchor element was created when calling that function create that we have implemented earlier. And finally, our JSX markup also contains another element called div. The create function gets called for this element. First parameter will be element name, which is div. The second parameter contains attributes of this element. We have specified only one attribute with the name class. And just because this element also wraps another element paragraph as a content within the third parameter, we receive this paragraph element. So now let's go back to the create function and remove this console log statement. And as we can see in our main.js file, we have another console log statement, which prints out content of the template variable. And this template variable is supposed to hold DOM structure, which was created based on our initial JSX markup. So if we take a look in the browser, we will see that this template variable holds the root element of our JSX markup. For now it is represented as a DOM element, but to see the whole content as text, we can use another DOM property called outer HTML. Let's use it in here and check console again. And now we see full string representation of our JSX markup. So this whole JSX markup that was specified in here, it was properly processed and turned into DOM structure. And then we have printed out its string representation in a console. And now what we're gonna do, instead of printing this markup in a console, we're actually going to create another div element in our index.html with an identifier of up and then let's go ahead and add this whole markup in our page. So I'm going to use query selector to select element with an ID of up. Then let's call append child. And as a parameter, we specify the element we wish to append, 
within element with an ID of app. And as we can see in the browser, new element was appeared on our page, which is that whole converted JSX markup added within app element. But right now we can't really see the link well, so let's go ahead and change style. We're going to make the text color white for this link. And there we go, now we can clearly see the link. And what we're going to do next is to extract this factory function create and move it in the new module. We're going to create new file called 12-create within source folder and put that function in here. And of course we need to export this function from this module. But after doing this change, we're actually going to get error in the console saying that create is not defined. So right now whenever we're gonna use a JSX markup, we also have to import our factory function create from the new module 12 create.js. Let's add a proper import statement in this file. And after this, as we can see, everything is working again. But yes, having to import this create function every time we want to use JSX markup is not very convenient. So we can use another trick and specify option with the name JSX inject in the ESBuild configuration object. And here we can define what content should be automatically added to all JSX files. So we can add in here that import statement of create function. So we don't have to import it manually over and over again in JSX files. Let's just specify an absolute path to the module which holds our create function. And now even though we haven't explicitly imported create function in JSX file, we still can see that our JSX code was properly processed and the result in JSX structure was injected into the page. That is because Vite has automatically added proper import statement, which imports our factory function create at the top of the JSX file. And by the way, every usage of the JSX element in our JSX markup was created into such function calls of our factory function create with proper parameters depending on the JSX element. So in this lesson we have learned how to write our own JSX specification and use it in Vite projects.